Hello and welcome back. This is Grillenheimer. Uh, let's let's go over qu pretty quickly uh, Luke 10, 25 through 37. And yes, this is basically the Good Samaritan. So no matter what Bible you got, let's pull it out and let's get and let's get to reading. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and put him to the test, saying, "Teacher, what shall I do to in inherit eternal life?" Now, this lawyer probably was a Jew, because we're about to find out in a second. And he, and he said to him, Jesus, what is written in the law? How does it read to you? Of course, he's asking a lawyer about the law. And of course, the, the lawyer answers, who's obviously a Jew, because he has the law memorized from uh, Leviticus and Deuteronomy here, and he kind of puts them together, and he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. Now, I can't remember which, if it's just before this or just after this, that you, the that uh, Jesus does say that, uh, you know, because they start, they'll, they, they'll question him at a certain point, asking him, you know, should we continue to follow the Ten Commandments? They're so old. And Jesus is like, yes, but there's more. Uh, you know, but wait, there's more. So, and, and it's basically an extension of this part out of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, basically treating others as you want to be treated, or the what we know as the golden rule. But let's continue. Verse 28. And Jesus said to him, You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But wishing to justify himself, the lawyer said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? So let's look back, look at that the law over again. And you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. So we're supposed to love the Lord our Father, or the Lord our God, with everything, and our neighbor with everything. So, good question. Who is our neighbor? Well, Jesus answers with a parable and a question. He does this a lot. Whenever he, someone presents him with a question, he normally answers with a question or with a parable. A certain man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop right here. Sergio and... Oh, I forgot her name. Um, cute couple that lives on that side of the, the world. Um... And, and they do all sorts of videos and, and tour and, and take video of places uh, uh, from biblical, biblical eras uh, and, and show that to us. And here is a screenshot from one of their videos, actually a video of behind the scenes of them traveling um, from Jerusalem to Jericho or vice versa. I forgot which way. And it took them overnight to get there and they had to stay the night. Um, and it was actually Sergio and three of his friends. So, and it was very interesting, and, and it's very noticeable that I might parallel this to something else that Jesus has already said, or that I have actually tried teaching in a previous video. But say, let's save that for another time. Um, so here's an image from that video. And he fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him, and went off, leaving him half dead. Now, imagine you're playing, I don't know, something like Morrowind or Oblivion or, or what is it called now, um, Skyrim or Skyrim Online or something like that. And you're waiting for some, and you fall in, you're waiting for a friend to come by and, and give you or revive you or something in some sort of online game like that. And uh, it, it, which is probably the best way to do this with, well, gamers need Christ. And so you're waiting for a friend to come help you, to revive you, to pick you back up. No one does. You see lots of players running by. No one is stopping to help you. So let's get back to Jesus' parable. 
um, which is similar to that. And by chance, a certain priest was going down on that road and he saw him and he passed by on the other side, the other side of the road, away from the naked, nearly dead man. I'm not going to help him, but that not that what a priest is supposed to do? And likewise, a Levite also. A Levite, isn't that also kind of one of the, a, a Jew that is from the family of Levi? Why isn't he helping a possible, and, and that's a, a part of this, is to help Jesus' parables would always use the people he's speaking with into the, inject them into the parables so they will help understand the story. So if this is a Jewish lawyer who knows the law very well, then the man beaten, naked and beaten up on the side of the road is more than likely supposed to be also a Jew who can't believe a priest has left him for dead. And now he can't believe a fellow Levite has left him for dead. But a certain Samaritan who was on a journey came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion. A Samaritan? Oh my goodness! We don't like them. They're heretics, and they're idolaters, and, and, and they, they may have similar Abrahamic codes, but we don't like them. We don't like them. We separate uh, them from us politically and everything. Oh no, but that's the one of the three, only one of the three people that stops to help this near dead man on the side of the road and came to him and bandaged, in, bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast, brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and whatever more you spend, when I return, I'll repay you. Which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor? Which, I'm sorry, verse 36 is, you know, outside the parable. And Jesus himself is asking, this is the question, to answer the lawyer's, well, question, which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell to into the robber's hands? But the thing is, is the word neighbor here, even in the Greek, can mean multiple things. Um... Oh, is that me? Uh, play, it, it looks like plesius, but it's pronounced play, placius or something like that. And it can exactly mean neighbor, but it uh, can also mean fellow. It can mean friend. So maybe what Jesus is asking here is, which of these three do you think proved to be a friend to the man who fell into the robber's hands, who was the one that actually helped him. And the lawyer said, the one who showed mercy toward him. And Jesus said to him, go and do the same. So while we have our own very shallow biases, biases here in America or wherever you live, oh my gosh, they're Polish. Oh my gosh, they're the, they're the French. Oh my gosh, they're the English. Or, oh my gosh, they're this color or that color or whatever. We're all related. <laughs> we really are. And we really need to start helping each other. And the bigger this movement is trying to divide us even more, we have to learn to... Sometimes it is hard to bridge that gap of... Should I be helping this person or not? That is my stomach making this noise. Um, and it's, we, we, it ha we do have to take a certain advisable discernment to realize, should we help this person or should we not? Are they really in help or are they playing? Or are they, you know, playing possum? So it's up to the individual to, to really make a, a, a sound decision if we should help someone or not. not and, and I hate it. It's, it has come to that. Um, but, you know, help anybody when you can, no matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter where they're from, no matter what heritage uh, they are. So with that, that is the parable of the Good Samaritan. Because who ended up helping the Jew half dead on the side of the road? The one he least suspected. And when you are at your worst when you are in your valley and things are going the, the 
worst part of your life, the person that's going to help you, that God is going to use, may be the person you least suspect. So with that, bless the reading of his word. Thank you for being with me. We'll see you next time. And as always, grace be unto you. Blessings. Shalom. We'll see you next time. Amen.